Welcome to the next installment of the Launch and Learn um, series. And as I said before in the, in the emails that were sent out, um, today we're going to talk about the Wi-Fi positioning tool uh, that we've been developing in-house at the ATRC through the SKIP project. And we have Jamin Kamisan, um, who has been working on it uh, from, the, from the very beginning. And Yura uh, Sinovich, uh, one of our work studies here in school, has actually um, to make it work really, really well um, at the state of it, uh, that is, it is now. So we're going to have like about maybe 25 minutes of presentation, I guess, and then we'll have time for questions and uh, comments or whatever. So, so uh, we've designed a, a Wi-Fi positioning tool to be used indoors. And the reason that we've been working on this tool um, using Wi-Fi pretty exclusively is that for the most part, GPS doesn't work inside. So for people trying to navigate indoor spaces uh, without a GPS signal, there's really no way to get your coordinates within a building. Um, so we thought, well, U of T, um, being what it is, happens to have wireless access points all over campus. Most places in most buildings have an available Wi-Fi signal. And so we thought, all that data is there, it's being broadcast all the time. Why not collect it and see what kind of relationships we can figure out about the, the spaces and the wireless data in, inside it. Um, one of the great things about Wi-Fi is that indoors, it, it propagates um, about 35 to 100 feet inside, and if there's a wall anywhere in the way, it degrades the signal uh, uh, exponentially. So you've got a, a really good way of determining if, if there's an access point that's visible in a scan, you're really, really close to that access point. And so right away we can infer things about a person's location, that they're probably on a floor, since concrete floors will attenuate a signal such that you can't even, you can't see an access point that's a floor above us. So if there's an access point showing up in a scan, I can just, we, we can infer that you're on a particular floor and in a particular building. Um, I'll get to that, that part later in Europe, we'll talk about the algorithm that we're, we're using to, to do that location stuff. Um, but initially, uh, the, the first problem that presented itself was we needed a list of floor plans and buildings and coordinates for each building on campus. Um, so um, I'll show you what those look like. We worked with um, the Office of Space Management at U of T. They've got uh, an extensive catalog of how to have floor plans for every single floor of every single building that U of T owns. Uh, the downtown campus, Scarborough, and Mississauga. And so what we've done is uh, we went, we got all that data. It's about a, a gigabyte, two gigabytes of, of floor plans and AutoCAD we have. And uh, downloaded them all and figured out uh, there's an open source tool that uh, converts all these images, all these AutoCAD files, closed proprietary uh, format, into SVG drawings, scalable vector graphics. Um, and having done that, we realized there's no way that we can run this application, let's say on a cell phone, with two gigabytes of graphics that the user is going to have to interact with or download all the time. So we converted them all down, down to PNGs, um, which you can see in front of you, and we've, we've got it down to about 130 megabytes or so. Um, one of the problems that presented itself in, in doing the, these floor plans was that uh, we had no way of extracting scale information, and that was a real stumbling block with us. We, there, there's no way that we could figure out uh, where a wireless scan had been done previously and where we, where we are now. Um, without some scale information. It would be next to useless to a, to a user trying to find, pinpoint their location inside um, without scale data. So Jorge found the author of the tool that we used to convert all these floor plans from AutoCAD, and he just sent him an email and said, hey, can you figure out the maximum extent of these, these drawings? Can you give us some scale information? And within two days, the, the author had patched the program and released a new version, and um, we got to do all the, the, the conversion work on the, on the graphics. Um, so, what, what we're doing, I'll just show you actually quickly how the application works, because it's all well and good to talk about it, but actually see what's going on. Um, as it's scanning, um, there are a number of different ways that we, we looked at, uh, at approaching how to locate the user in a building on a particular floor. And like I said, GPS doesn't really work very well. 
Um, but even with Wi-Fi, there's been a lot of research done using triangulation, using known locations of <coughs> access points in a building, and figuring out the signal strength of each access point that shows up in a scan, and triangulating based on... Okay, so there's the scans done. Um, I'll explain what that means in a, in a second. But um, we looked at this, this triangulation, uh, different ways of doing triangulation, and realized that it was really, really labor-intensive. This was before Yura had, had come on board with the project, so it was really just myself who was going to have to go and figure out the exact locations on every single floor plan of every single building. Well, there are over a thousand files that we've got um, for, for campus, and figuring out the exact coordinates of each access point. Um, so we realized pretty quickly that that was going to be impossible. It would take forever to collect it. And the other thing is that people move access points all the time. You know, they move a couple of feet and the signal strength changes completely. So that was just not going to happen. Um, so instead what we do is we take something called a fingerprint. And all, all we're doing is recording um, in a particular location, like I said, the access points that show up in, in a wireless scan. Um, I can do a quick, a quick list of all the access points that show up here. Uh, and so all we do is, like I said before, uh, just by inference, if uh, a given access point <coughs> shows up in, in a new scan, we can assume that you're within 35 feet or so of that access point. And that information in itself, it doesn't sound all that meaningful, but it is still pretty useful because we can locate um, a person on a particular floor of a building, like the, uh, the scan here shows those, those circles. Um, these circles right here, uh, they show that we're close to where we are in the boardroom. The boardroom is this room right here, this little uh, area. So we're off by maybe five meters or so, which is pretty good considering Yura did a scan 20 meters over by the escalators um, on Friday. There's no information about this room, really, except for what I just did right here, right now. So to have figured out, just by inference, that we're on the first floor of Robarts, we're within five meters of the boardroom, um, is, is pretty useful information. Um, this is all done with their triangulation. This is just looking at the, the frequency of occurrence of um, MAC addresses in the scan, the, the unique number that every single access point has. Uh, there ideally should be no two access points in the entire world that have the same number. Um, so that's some really useful information that we can, we can use to figure out that we're within those, those circles that, that show up on the map. Um, that's mostly my part, um, just having converted all the floor plans and built the infrastructure to, to be able to do scans and, and to get your uh, some data to actually start processing and, and figure out where a person is. Um, you probably want to talk about how, how we're doing that. So, um, what was the pretty much the application uh, works in two parts. First one is data collection and organization in the database. And the second part is the actual search.